Something very powerful and awesome is going on in America and the world today. God's doing something very hidden. It's very quiet, but it's so awesome and supernatural that it's beyond human comprehension. In fact, what the Lord's doing right now is going to affect the whole world in these last days. And here's what it is. He's preparing a very small but most powerful army of dedicated Christians who are more dedicated than anybody who followed Hitler. I was reading a book recently, a picture book of the story of the rise and fall of the German Reich and of Hitler, and he started with an army of young people who were ready to lay down their lives, and many of them just laid down their lives to die for Adolf Hitler. But this is going to be an army more dedicated than even the communists. They were considered to be among the most loyal people on the face of the earth. Now God is destroying communism all over the world. This army is going to be more dedicated and devoted to the cause of Christ than all of those over one million young people, mostly teenagers, that were killed in absolute obedience to the Ayatollah Khomeini of Iran. They often, without guns, they just waves and waves of teenagers went against the Iraqi fortresses and guns, and they were mowed down by the thousands. Over a million young men died sacrificing their life for the Ayatollah. But folks, this army that God is raising up is going to be the most dedicated army on the face of the earth. Never before anyone is pure, devoted, and fearless as this remnant that's coming forth. They're going to come forth and do exploits, and they're going to shake hell, literally. <clears throat> now, I, I have heard all my life about our godly forefathers, the, the, the mothers of Zion, the fathers of Zion, men who spent hours and days in prayer, who fasted, who, who had the ability and the power to stand up against the wave of immorality in their day. And, and I've often thought about those great forefathers. Many of them are dead. They're gone. But folks, the army that God's going to raise up and is in the process of raising up right now, not going to be made up primarily of gray-haired old prophets. Many of those gray-haired old prophets are sitting in front of television now getting fat and have lost the touch and anointing of God. God's bypassed them long ago. This, this new army is going to be made up of handmaidens of the Lord. It's going to be made up of servants of the Lord, ordinary Christians who lay hold of God, and God lays hold of them, and a whole new realm of of service, a whole new realm of the moving of the Holy Spirit is about to break forth. <clears throat> right now, if you look at the, at the church religious system, you lose heart. Yeah. I want you to keep in mind that what God did in Samuel's day, he keeps doing in every generation. In every generation, when, when the so-called church, the organized church, backslides and gets cold and compromising, God just gives up on it and raises up another. He's always had a people after his heart. He's always had a praying people in every generation. He's had, he's had that little spark of fire. And when the old dies, he just fans the new and starts all over again. And that's called the remnant. All through the ages, there's been a remnant. But all this remnant that's coming is going to be beyond anything the world has seen. If you've got idolatry in your heart, you're going to wind up in a church with a preacher with idolatry in his heart. And that preacher is going to minister to that idol that's in your heart. He's going to tell you it's okay to sin. He's going to tell you it's all right to go easy. It's all right to have fun. It's all right to be a sports fanatic and not pray or seek the face of God. That's what's happening all over America. The old system is dying. God is leaving it. He's already left most of it. You can go to many churches, even Pentecostal churches, and it's death. God's not there. God's gone. The church of Shiloh was abandoned by God, and it was judged by the Lord. And Israel was smitten, and they fled every man to his own tent. And there was a great slaughter for these fell of Israel, for their fellow of Israel, 30,000 footmen. The ark of God was taken, and the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, were slain. In one day, God said enough. In one day, God came in. The ark of the Lord was captured, which means the presence of God has moved now far, far away. The glory of the Lord's departed. Ichabod is born. Not only that, 
God moved in judgment quickly on the ministry. Folks, what you're seeing now is what God said in this book, judgment will begin in the house of the Lord. That's why you see men falling on the left and falling on the right. Not just suicides. Not, not just people being removed from the ministry. Not just being exposed for adultery and witchcraft or gambling. But they're falling dead. They're falling, literally. And the day is coming. God is going to deal so severely with the wicked congregations. The wicked servants of the Lord that are backslidden. God's going to move with great judgment. We see it now in the land. When Eli heard the news that the ark was taken, his sons were killed. The Bible said he fell over. It fell over off the seat backwards and broke his neck and he died. And God said, well, there's sin in the camp. The glory is going to depart. While the church of Eli was under judgment and being forsaken by the glory of the Lord and taken over by the devil, God was busy raising up a remnant. And Samuel represents the holy remnant. Now, folks, listen to me very carefully now. <clears throat> I want to take you into this book, into this chapter, and I want to show you how God trained Samuel to come up to take the place of this dead religious system, how God had a plan. And this is what God's going to do. This is what he's doing right now. He's training some of you that are here now. Many of you are being trained by the Holy Ghost because you're going to be a part of this, this army that he's raising up. I want you to listen very closely. And I, I believe when I'm finished, you'll be able to know whether or not you're a part of this remnant that he's raising up to do his work in the last day. <clears throat> Here's the training and preparation of a holy remnant. First of all, the remnant is always birthed in prayer and intercession. <clears throat> always. Hannah birthed Samuel to bitter tears and much prayer. Scripture says, and she was in grief of soul. This is 1 Samuel 1.10. She was in grief of soul. She prayed unto the Lord and wept sore. Now, keep in mind that Elkanah, her, her uh, husband, had two wives. Peninnah was the other wife. She had children. <clears throat> Hannah had none. And the Bible says her adversary provoked her sore and made her fret. Listen, please. If you're going to seek God with all your heart, with all your soul, all your strength, and you're going to feel the pain and the grief of God for His church, you're going to suffer consequences. You're going to be misunderstood on all sides. You're going to have people accuse you of all kinds of things. Hannah prayed, if you give me a man, child, I'll give him unto the Lord all the days of his life. Then she turned to Eli and said, don't look on me as a wicked woman or a daughter of Belial, for out of the abundance of my sorrow and grief have I spoken up to this point. <clears throat> and I'll tell you, God heard her prayer. And the word, the name Samuel means God heard my prayer. That's what Samuel means. And folks, God's hearing the prayer of a people in his house, of people who yearn for an outpouring of the righteousness of Jesus Christ, of people who yearn for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon their sons and their daughters. The people who want to see the glory of the Lord come down on His church. The people who want to see God move in a very special way in these last days. God's going to hear their cry. If, if you've been wooed to prayer, if God's been calling you to prayer, you're feeling the grief of God. Now, I'm not talking about spending five, ten hours a day in prayer. I know people who pray many hours who never touch God. They never feel the grief and the pain of God's heart. Now, these are people who are really on their face seeking Him. <clears throat> Hallelujah. These are people who are pouring their heart out to God. And there were people that were given, according to Hannah, given to the Lord all the days of their life. These people are so committed, there's no thought of backsliding. There's no up and down, in and out, hot and cold. They are wholly given to the heart of God. You know what Jesus said? My sheep know vo voice. But what else did he say? They hear when I call. In other words, they hear my voice when I'm speaking. 
when I'm speaking. Folks, you can listen all day. If God's not talking, what's, what's the point? God only talks to those who talk to Him. God only talks to those who are saying, Now, He'll talk to the church, but He'll talk in one word syllables. Repent! Turn! I'll tell you who He's talking to. He's talking to those like Samuel with a pure heart. With a heart open. The time is coming when people are going to want to hear this word from heaven. The Bible said, God so moved on Samuel, none of his words fell to the ground. In other words, nothing he said was empty. What he said, he heard from heaven. And folks, if you want to hear from God, God will speak to you. That means you don't go into his presence. You don't go into his presence carrying your load of sin with you. You allow God to deal with that sin. You allow God to take that temper away from you and sanctify it. You ask God to do what he has to do in your life. And you go into the presence of the Lord and say, Oh Lord, I want you to purge and sanctify me and cleanse me because I want to come to you with clean hands and a pure heart. And I want to hear you speak to my heart. God's raising up a holy people that know the voice of God. They're not going to have to go to some advances and get a word. We got people running all the United States trying to get a word. You know why they? Because God's not talking to them. I don't want God to talk to me through somebody else. I want to hear it right from his heart, right from his lips. I've got to do another. I, I've got to get on with this. Number three. This remnant is going to be trained in true deliverance through the knowledge of the ways of God. I'm telling you, folks, listen to me, please, if you haven't heard anything else. <clears throat> What's coming to America is such, a, such chaos. <clears throat> Do you know why Louis Farrakhan is becoming so popular? He's on the front page, I think it's Time Magazine. <clears throat> in the black community, Louis Farrakhan is second in popularity only to Jesse Jackson. He's more popular now than Martin Luther King. That's what it says. And out of his innermost being is spewing hatred. Then on the other side, you've got on radio, you've got white radio talk hosts that are stirring up full of hate. Right here in New York, some of those white men hate blacks with a passion. I can't listen to any of that garbage. But folks, it doesn't look very serious right now, but very soon, not far off, when the economic chaos comes, you watch what happens. There'll be armies of blacks, armies of whites, Jews against black, black against Jew, black against Korean, Korean against black. Folks, the race wars that I'm talking about, I've warned you and warned you and warned you. How many have heard my warnings? I have, until I, I just, anymore, it just uh, <clears throat> seems people don't want to listen. I want you to hear it. Hear it good. America's headed for chaos and a collapse. And the word deliverance is going to take on a whole new meaning. Right now, the word deliverance to most of us, we talk about deliverance meetings. You know, somebody's eye opened or somebody throwing away their cane and, and you know, we see television cameras and, and, and that's supposed to be a deliverance meeting. Folks, the word deliverance is going to change its meaning. People are just going to want safety. People are going to want to hear a word from God. When does this end? What's God doing? Is this God's judgment? People are going to wonder. They're going to look everywhere searching. And the word deliverance is going to come down. Listen to me, please. From, for people... God's ordinary people, not pastors, but you, in the pew, who are so calm, so peaceful, because God's with you, you're hearing from heaven. God told you he's going to protect you. God told you an angel's going to walk with you. God told you all this was coming, so you're not upset. And people are going to come to you for deliverance. The new deliverance ministry is going to be those who can say, come on. Sit down. I'll tell you what's going to happen. 
Here's what the Bible says. Here's what's going to happen. And you, there, there are going to be people reaching out just to hear somebody, to see somebody with calm and peace that's not going crazy. Amen. The Bible said men's hearts will fail them for fear watching those things coming on the earth. Folks, it's going to be beyond anything we can imagine. But there's going to be a holy remnant that are steadfast and sure, unmovable. Go to 1 Samuel. I'll show you 1 Samuel. Folks, listen to me, please. The Philistines gathered against Israel to do battle. The Bible said, and Samuel cried. And as Samuel was offering up the burnt offering, the Lord thundered on that day with great thunder upon the Philistines. They were smitten before Israel. <clears throat> Here's what happened. And this is what you have to hear before I close. Samuel said, I want you to all gather at Mizpah with me. He said, I'm going to tell you the way out. Because over 50,000, 70 people had died because they peeked into the ark. And everywhere the ark was, people were dying like flies. The whole land was in chaos. Can you imagine 50,000, 70 men dropping dead? People said, who can stand before such a holy God? This judgment, is, it has to be God. We know it's God. Nobody knew what to do. They said, who shall go up for us? How are we going to stop this plague? What do we do? And there was one man had the answer. It was Samuel, the remnant. He called the people together, and the Bible said he judged them. He judged their sin. He exposed sin in the camp. And the Bible said they fasted before the Lord, and they humbled themselves, and they prayed. And the Bible said, while Samuel stood before the altar offering the sacrifice, God came and thundered against the Philistines, and there was a great slaughter, and God's people won the victory. Why? Because one man knew the answer. One man knew what to do. He'd heard from God. And folks, the day is coming. People, all, your neighbors and everybody you work with, everything else, they're going to want to hear from them. There got to be answers. And I'm telling you, God is trying to get you on your face before him so that he can deal with you as, as a father with a son or a daughter. I'm not saying we have an angry God mad at you. I'm saying God in his mercy is trying to raise up a people in this city that are going to be leavened in the lump. You're going to have Pentecostal churches, Baptist churches, other churches all around you. Many that are not going to be prepared. They're going to come running to you. What's the word of the Lord? What's God saying? Paul, oh, folks, get into this book. Get into this book. Get along with God. Let him begin to speak to you. And I'll tell you, when he speaks to you, don't ask him to reveal who's got sin in their life so you go to them. Has God to reveal the sin in your life? The things that are despised, and I shall raise them up and anoint them. I'll send them forth to do exploits in my name. If you will come forth now, Volunteer your soul, body, and spirit, and mind. And cry out to the Lord. Here I am. Send me. I will lay hold upon you. And I will anoint you. And I will open doors for you. And I will stir your heart and you will know me and you will know my voice. And I will use you to glorify my name. You will never have a name, but my name will be glorified through your lips and your heart. You'll never be recognized, but I'll recognize you. And on that day, I will reward you because you were faithful to the call. Respond now in your heart. Ask the Holy Spirit to come and take hold upon you. And he will, he will hear that cry. He will take hold upon your spirit and in your heart. He will enlarge you. He will enlarge your spirit and your vision and your mind. You may see and know the things and the ways of God. You'll understand the ways of the Lord. And in understanding His ways and His thoughts, you will be touched and used in a very special way. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
Can you say, Lord, here I am, use me, lay your hand on me. Holy Spirit, come and touch me. Awaken my spirit, woo me. Lord, to pray and seek your face, to deal with sin in my life. 